When Lorena Gonzalez resigned her position as Assemblywoman from the 80th District to head California's Labor Federation, that left a vacant seat. Now two Democrats and former City Council members Georgette Gomez and David Alvarez are vying for the spot, along with the Republican candidate Lincoln Picard. I got a chance to catch up with all three of them earlier this week. I think um, a lot of the folks in the 80th are working families. Uh, they're they're busy trying to make uh, enough money to to survive in, in our in our city, and uh, so I'm going to continue working hard on addressing affordable housing. I'm going to continue working hard to clean our air from pollutants. Right, and the reason that is very critical, and sometimes don't people don't make this connection, is that that impacts our quality of life, but it also impacts our health. And we saw how having asthma or respiratory illnesses during COVID. We saw what the impacts were, right? So the fact that we have more air pollution in South Bay is not acceptable and we really need to do something about that. I'm committed in, in, in trying to work really hard to clean our air. I'm committed in working with uh, Supervisor Nora Vargas to address the, the Tijuana sewage contamination that has been going on for a very, very uh, long time. I know Mayor Todd Gloria too has been doing a lot of work on that. Want to make sure that we get that done. Uh, the fact that this district goes all the way to the border uh, so that's exciting for me because it allows me to to engage in binational conversations um, and to really elevate the, the importance of our border and what it means to our region. So I'm excited for that. I um, want to uh, acknowledge that we are still living under you know the impacts of COVID. Uh, high unemployment happened to be pretty high in South Bay. So bringing employers to the community and addressing income inequality is really crucial. So that's another area that I really want to uh, make a make a mark and really address just overall how much money our community members are making so they can have a, a, a healthy livable life. I'm really concerned about the future of California and where we're headed. Uh, our problems seem to be getting worse. Uh, the educational system we've seen our children fall behind over the last few years as a result of the online learning that's been very difficult for a lot of families especially those in public schools. Uh, we're not focusing on getting kids from uh, community college into into university so I want to make sure that we make a university a reality here in San Diego and South Bay in Chula Vista specifically. Homelessness is getting worse although we're spending more money now than ever before. They're now living in parks and on the sides of freeways. Um, it is not a good condition for anyone neither the the people who live in the community neither the homeless who unfortunately are dying on the streets. So I think all those issues are really of concern to me as a father, as a member of this community, as someone who's lived here my whole life, as someone who has served in public service and know that we can make a difference when you get into public office by doing good work for the community. And that's why I decided to run for the seat. It's become very unaffordable. That's why we do have to build more housing. I'm doing it myself, like I said, in my own backyard here, building a, a granny flats so that I, we can help be part of the solution. We need to build more units. We need to look at the areas where we have vacant lots and build more units. Those are all part of the solution for the housing that can help stabilize the prices so that people don't feel so priced out. On things like inflation and gas, we do need to look at uh, uh, making sure that we don't increase taxes on gas. In fact, we should look at uh, doing a holiday on the gas tax, at least on a temporary basis, so that people aren't hurting so much uh, today. Um, and, and, and we'll see where this is going. And there's talks of prices maybe going down, which is great. But until we see that happen, we need to give relief to people immediately. The Democrats are, they seem to stand back and say, it's okay to kill, kill a citizen before he can speak, to, can speak his mind or say, defend himself. So some of them have to stand up and protect the unborn from being murdered, in my opinion. Uh, you have two sets of uh, DNA when you're talking about a woman and her baby. That's two people. This is the way God makes us. So if you give permission to people to kill them, you're actually killing one of our new, newest citizens, our newest, uh, most innocent citizens. So we, we need to speak up for them and, and, fight, and fight for those folks. Um, there's also the issue of school choice. We need school choice so that we get better competition Parents, will, kids will get a better education when there's competition out there. Parents will have a choice of where they want to send their kids and get the money to follow the kids wherever they go. And that's, a lot of people don't like that. But that's, that's my opinion. That's what I would fight for if I was uh, elected. We also have the border issue. We get crazy stuff going on down at the border. It seems to be open um, and we need to uh, close the border. There's also voter ID. We want to make sure everybody gets one vote and only one vote. That's a very important aspect. And people need to feel like there is no voter fraud out there. And right now, there's a lot of people who believe this is voter fraud. 
and uh, especially with this ballot harvesting, if you don't if you don't do that legally, you can end up with voter fraud. So we need, we need to enforce those kind of laws and make sure that there's one vote for one person, so everybody feels like their vote is really counting and, and doing what it's supposed to do. All right, so the polls close in the special election on April 5th. If it goes to a runoff, that would occur on June 7th. These three candidates are also running in the general election for a new term that would begin in January. The primary for that is also on June 7th, and the general election is set for November. We'll be right back.